good evening ladies and gentlemen i am dr nilal ratnayaka we welcome you all for this wonderful webinar which you are going to start uh, and i would like to inform you that this the family apostolate committee of st john dal bastoni church presided by our parish priest reverend dr anthony fernando pulle warmly welcomes you all to yet another webinar so today as you know we have been having a series of webinars conducted each month and as you know today our our speaker is roshan pereira you have heard very interesting talks by roshan and roshan is an experienced speaker attached to the archdiocese of colombo Uh, in the family postulate, and he does pre-kena yes. classes, post-kena classes, and marriage enrichment programs for for and uh, talks for the youth as well. And this webinar would not have been possible without the support of our technical team, headed by Mr. Manon Pereira, and our professional uh, and prominent photographer. and event organizer mr errol johnson and mr niranjan fernando suendrini fernando uh, so so thank you uh, they been a uh, big asset to us and now we kindly request each and every one of you to switch off your videos and mute your microphones and we will have a question and answer session at the end of this uh, program uh, so over to you roshan to start on the topic of marital intimacy and conjugal love thank you thank you uh, thank you very much for joining all of us here tonight um, wherever you are if you are in sri lanka welcome uh, i wish you a very good evening to start with uh, for all our viewers in UK good afternoon whoever who is in US joining us i want to say good morning to you all right uh, before we start uh, another request just a reminder please make sure that you mute your audio part of it and please do not switch on your video section otherwise it will disturb us for that reason so um i invite you for the next one and a half hours to listen to this program i assure you at the end of it uh, you will have a lot of things to take away all right uh, let's start the first uh, with the slide first slide it says seek and you will find that is in matthew chapter 7 verse 7 it's a beautiful one which says seek and you will find tonight i am going to what i'm going to do is to support you to do this thing this is what my idea is this is what my effort is so in that context i will help you to see it from tonight second one as you see find it from tonight and the third one is and have it in your life from tonight this is what my goal is it works on this beautiful bible quotation matthew chapter 7 verse 7 seek and you will find it is for that purpose you are seated on your couch and looking at your screen to look for it and i will help you to find it we go to the second slide you see a foundation here now before anyone puts up a house the first thing that person does is to put a foundation when the foundation is strong the house that comes up will be strong for sure so the foundation is very important that's the foundation so in my foundation the first one that i chose was in genesis chapter 1 verse 27 the first book of the bible god said god created mankind into his own image and likeness in other words all of us we are created according to god's image 
In other words, your spouse has got the features of God. Your spouse has got the features of God. Right? That's the start. Second one, 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. So, the image of God is love. In other words, your spouse's image is love. Your spouse's image is love. Your image should also be love. So, out there, a lot of people, when you see that exceptional love of God coming from someone, you get attracted to that person. And at some point, you decide to marry that person. To marry that person. And we call this marriage. Let's go to the third one. I go back to Genesis. It says in 2.24, a man leaves his father and mother and joins to his wife. That is where marriage takes place. So he sees God's love in one person and he decides, I leave my mother and father and I join her. Join her. That's what we do in front of the altar, going in front of God, and we say, I take you as my wife. And you give a lot of vows in front of God. You say, I take you as my beloved wife. In good times, in bad times, in rich, poor, everything. But... I want to take you to the balance part of this Bible quotation. It's a beautiful one. And they become one flesh. And they become one flesh. So what you said in front of the altar, in front of God, on that night, you take her, you take him, and you physically start Showing God's love to the other person. And that is what we call conjugal love. That is what we call intercourse. This is what we call love making. So, all of us, we are created into God's own image and likeness. We see that exceptional person. We get married to him. We get married to her. And... We leave, at that time, we leave our mothers and fathers, our biological mothers and fathers, and we become one flesh from that night onwards. Before I get into the next slide, I want to tell you something, something different. Something from the spiritual side of it. Let's see what Jesus did. I want to take this same quotation, this Genesis 2.24. What, what did Jesus do? He left his father up there in heaven. He left his mother in Nazareth. He left his mother in Nazareth. And he went behind his bride. Up on the Calvary, on a cross, he became one flesh. He became one flesh. That's the example what Jesus is showing each one of us. Each one of us. Okay, we get into the next slide. If you're seeing this, now, there is a need before a person gets married, before this conjugal love starts, before lovemaking starts inside you, there is this need. And that need is shown in a beautiful quotation. I thought I cannot miss this thing. 1 Corinthians 7, 9. It says, For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To burn with passion. It is rather better you get married. These are not my words. But the words of the Spirit of God comes on paper through St. Paul and he writes in 1 Corinthians 7, 9 to say it is better for a person to get married rather than to burn with passion. 
That's a beautiful one. So you get married. So I would say the second one, only way to satisfy the sexual desire of a person in God's plan of marriage. This is the only way. Your passion, your burning inside could only be satisfied in marriage. In marriage. There is no other way. No other way in God's plan. This is a beautiful thing. This is what, this is why, one reason why marriage or conjugal marriage, a conjugal love before marriage is not acceptable. It is only after marriage. It is only after marriage. Look at the last one. Only action that spouses depends on each other. Only action. Yes, maybe if your spouse doesn't cook, you can go outside and eat something. Yes. If your spouse closes the door for you in the night, you come late, you can still afford to go to a hotel and sleep if you want to. Don't do that, but I'm telling you. But there is something in marriage that he, she depends 100% on the other person and that is conjugal love that is conjugal love all right look at the last one last one in this slide here you are the initiating and the respondent now all books tell me practically all of us know the initiator of the conjugal act is the husband he is the person who gives the invitation. He is the one who asks for it. He is the person who comes and puts the arm around her. He becomes the initiator. And the wife becomes the respondent. So the wife says, yes. She says positively, yes. Then this lovemaking starts. This is the norm. This is the norm. Very important. So when the husband gives this invitation, when the husband says, come, what is your answer? You as a wife, what is your answer? I will tell you something. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, there is a quotation like this. It says, your body does not belong to you, but your body belongs to your spouse. Wives, your body does not belong to you. It belongs to the husband. So when the husband is giving this invitation, when this husband is asking from you for this conjugal act, can you say no? Can you say no? You can open the Bible and see what I'm talking. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You will find it. So, I was talking like this some years back in a church. After the talk, a lady came to me. And she said, Roshan, true enough. But we also need it. This wife was telling me. I said, yes. I took that from this ear, took it to my heart, and I went away. After some months, I was in another church doing a similar program. And after the program, and I said the same thing, the initiator is the husband and the respondent is the wife. After some time, program was over. A young lady came to me. And she said, Roshan, what you said was right, but I also like to have, I'm also an initiator. Twice it happened. I thought for myself, I must look to the book, what God says about this, whether this is right or wrong, or is it something coming from flesh? Or is it, has God told, spoken anything about this? I was looking inside the Bible for this. You know what happened? I found a beautiful scripture reading. Here you are. It comes in Song of Songs. 
a song of Solomon. In chapter 5, verse 3, beautiful, it says, the woman is telling, I have already undressed. Why should I get dressed again? The wife is telling, I have already undressed. Why should I get dressed again? For the down, it said, I have washed my feet. Why should I get it dirty again? What does this say? What does this say? The two ladies were right. The two ladies were right. I was interested in reading Song of Songs after I saw this. I went further down. I went further down. And it said, so it is not one-way traffic always. That was the thing, the model that I took. All right, let's get into the second, second quotation. Here it comes in Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 10. Chapter 8, verse 10. It goes like this. Again, the woman is telling, the wife is telling, the bride is telling, here you are. I am a wall, and my breasts are its towers. A wall, towers. Towers are taller than the wall, yes? Towers are tall. So, this wife is advertising herself, and she is telling, come, I want it. Yes. I realized one thing. Certainly, it is not one-way traffic always. It's not always the husband who becomes the initiator. No. This was in chapter 8, verse 10. I got interested in reading this song of songs more. I went further down. I went further down. And I saw at the end, in same chapter, chapter 8, verse 14, it said like this. The woman says, the wife says, the bride says like this. Come to me, my lover. Come to me, my lover, like a gazelle, like a young stag on the mountains where spices grow. Advertising is over. Running around the bush is over. She's telling, come to me. You think she's calling me, this husband to eat ice cream? No. No. She's calling for lovemaking. She's calling for lovemaking. She's calling for conjugal act. So here you are. I decided certainly is over. Definitely it is not one-way traffic always. Definitely. So, if you as a husband, you are thinking it is only I who wants it tonight. God has a word for you through Song of Songs and he is telling you, your wife also wants it. So, both the ladies were right and it made me go back to the Bible. Right. So, when your wife wants it, all the wives who are watching, when your husband wants it, can you say no? I have another scripture reading in this. That's in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. Remember what was in Luke chapter 22, verse 19? Every time you go for holy mass, the priest says this. The priest says this. He takes, he takes Jesus like this and shows each one of you and he says, this is my body which will be given up for you. Each one of you should be able to go in front of your spouse and say, this is my body which will be given up for you. Can you do that? Can you do that? An invitation from the Lord. An invitation from the Lord. Jesus did that. He went up on the cross and said, this is my body. And you will have eternal life. 
do it and see next time when your husband is asking from you for conjugal love love making you should be able to tell in front of your husband this is my body which will be given up for you given up for you let's get into this you have a picture with a husband head down hands in front shoulders down why do you think he looks like this why do you think he looks like this it's because his needs are not met his needs are not met that is why he looks like that i tell you there you are see the first one when the need is not met it affects your relationship i tell you sometimes i go to different churches to do post kena programs marriage enrichment programs you know these people who are married for 10 years 15 years 20 years husband and wife how they sit the husband is seated like this and the wife is seated like that as if they don't even have any relationship yes and but when i go for pre kena classes it's completely different people who want to get married people who come for these classes you know how they are they are touching each other hands inside wah yes but 10 years into marriage 15 years of marriage god so i try to think where the problem is and this is one of that i tell you no love making no love making no conjugal lack for days maybe for weeks if not for months so the couple relationship is like this far this far second one alcohol let's see how this comes when this is not met he looks for something that where he gets some pleasure some satisfaction to make him feel good so he gets into this this yes if you are seated with your wife if you are seated with your husband i'm sorry but i need to tell you this i have a lot of people coming to me and talking about this oops sorry about this about this one of the questions i ask when the wives tell me that you know my husband is an alcoholic i listen very patiently and i throw this question when did you to last do this love making you know what happens the wife's head drops down like this yes and when i talk to the husband husband tells a very different story all right see the next one pornography something that i'm working on these days with another program when the need is not met he wants to get this thing to his head he wants to feel at least he want to look at it so what do you think he gets into he gets into this oops he gets into this pornography yes it's very easy today it's very easy today you get into your room at the comfort of aircon or at the comfort of a fan you know working on top you have the screen in front of you and you have a great satisfaction you think you have and the wife is telling my husband is always on the smartphone he is addicted to it yes you need to go back to the drawing board and ask when did we last have love making when did we last had that intercourse ask then you will find then you will find for yourself why is he getting into this 
is because something is not met. That's the reason. One of the reasons. All right, let's get into the next one. Abortion. Abortion and need not met. I'll tell you how it joins. I'll tell you how it joins. So when the wife does not give this thing, when the wife does not respond, he has the desire inside. He has the urge inside. He has this great passion, the burning sensation inside. He wants to get this fulfilled. He looks for this from outside. He gets into an extramarital affair. Most extramarital affairs doesn't end up in a park or in a cinema, but it ends up with lovemaking, I'm telling you. It ends up with lovemaking. And that lover, one day, she comes and tells this man, I have some news for you. So this husband starts thinking, what is this news? And she tells, look, I am going to have a child from you. I am going to say, what? What do you think this husband does? What do you think this husband does? This husband proposes this lover, the partner in this extramarital affair. He proposes, let's do an abortion. Let's do an abortion. So you see how it end, ends up. Trouble. Trouble. We'll talk about it a little bit more next slide or two. Right. The last one. Contraception. Contraception. Big time. Big time. When the need is not met with that husband, he gets into an extramarital affair. He doesn't want to do this, but he uses this. He uses this. So you see, whole heap of things just because the need is not met. Need is not met. It is time for all these spouses who are respondents to start thinking. What am I doing? What am I doing? We need to ask from ourselves. It is important. Okay. Let's get into the next slide. Reasons, I told you, I'll come back to that extramarital affair. Here you are. Before I start this slide, I want to tell you something. In year 2012, in our archdiocese, in Colombo archdiocese, the priest who was in charge at that time, we did, one of our teams got involved in this. We did a survey or a sort of a research. And in that research, there were some findings. I thought I should share that slide that information with you tonight because it pertains to this topic, right? So the first one is to say, unsatisfied, so reasons causing extramarital affairs, the first reason is unsatisfactory marital sex life, 23%. The next one says, emotional needs not met, 38%. This is a good one because if you can remember last month, we talked about this with love languages. Emotional needs not met. 38% of those people who had extramarital affairs said the reason was this. 38% of those people. Next one. Spouse not being attractive. 12%. Something to think of. More facilities are found outside marriage. 12%. Next one is drunkenness, 3%. Alcohol, 3%. Okay, financial difficulties, 3%. So not having money is not a big issue, right? Not a big issue. All the other things, all the other reasons, I would say we got 9%. But take a look at this. Take a look at this, what's here. 
23% said unsatisfactory marital sex life. Marital sex life. Conjugal act not satisfied, unsatisfactory. Tonight, you need to keep your hand on your heart and ask for yourself, am I satisfied with my lovemaking with my spouse? You need to ask. Yes. Am I? What can I do to get this thing right? We need to ask. We need to ask. All right. I have some alarming news for you. Alarming news for you. And this is good. It's shocking, really. Divorce. You know, I want to bring this example. Let's say, I think last time around, no. Let's say a dog, you know, your pet at home. If you don't feed your pet at home, what do you think your pet will do? What do you think your dog will do? You think your dog is going to starve at your place? Do you think? Your dog, I tell you, your dog will run away from your place and look for food from outside. Look for food from outside. Yes. The same rule applies to your marriage also. If you don't want to respond to your spouse, when your spouse gives you the invitation for conjugal love, and when you don't want to respond to that positively, your spouse will start looking for it outside. And at that point, and at that point, he will reach, he will reach a stage where he will start thinking, I will divorce this person. I will divorce this person. The reason is what? Because he or she never received this from his or her spouse. I have a great news clip. I want you to read this. It comes in this website. It comes in this website. You might not be able to see it, but I'll show you what it said. It said something like this. It said, denying sex to spouse is now grounds for divorce according to high court. According to high court. Now, you might ask from your Roshan, from where did you take it? Ah, oh, yes, I'm going to show you from where I took it. Here you are. That's the place where I took it. Take a good look at it. Mail Online India, denying sex to spouse is now grounds for divorce according to high court. Tan, tan, tan. There you are. Okay. So, before you say no to your spouse, start thinking twice. Start thinking twice. Considering all these things that I described for the past five, ten minutes, can you say no when your spouse asks for it? Considering all these things, can you say no? I leave it for you to think about it. Okay? I leave it for you to think about it. Let's go to the next one. When the need is met. Previous couple of slides. When the need was not met. The consequences I explained to you. Here you are. When the need is met, what happens? We'll discuss. Yeah? That's what happens. Okay. Releases doses of endorphins and oxytocin. Now, these are chemicals. You know, if you want, you can call it as hormones, even if you want to, chemicals released in brain. Endorphins are something like feel good things. So when you have an intercourse, when you are into lovemaking, 
lots of endorphins get released from your brain. You feel good. Wow. Good. Oxytocin is another chemical. It helps to bond, connect. You don't love, do lovemaking standing miles apart. No. You get close like this. To the level of intimate zone. You start putting your arms around. Faces touch each other. And your body starts touching with the other person. That's where oxytocin starts flowing. So it's good. Good. Right. Next one. One of the best. Oops, sorry. One of the best enjoying exercises. I tell you. If, you, if I tell you walk for two miles, you will say, oh no, you will give me 100 ex excuses. But turn to your husband and ask, you know, how about this? Any complaints? No. No. One of the best exercises. You've got heaps of these things, but I've selected a few of them. Relieves from stress, definitely. One of the best things, if you are a wife, your husband could be coming home with a face like this and, you know, books thrown all over a tired day. If you are a wife who understands this man of yours, I tell you, you have a great key in your hand to put things right. To put things right. Next one. Reduces. High blood pressure. When you are into this exercise, you know, high blood pressure, if you have, you need to sweat out. This is a good exercise. See, God-given things. Are we using it? Are we using it? When you do this, I tell you, when the need is met, Putting a smile on God's face. God must be looking from top and thinking, wow, at last, my couple, they are enjoying what I have given them. He's happy. Because what did he say? Remember? Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. A man leaves his father and mother and joins to his wife and they become one flesh. So this husband and wife is doing something what God wants. You think he's sad or you think he's happy? He is happy. Before I leave this slide, I want to give you a bonus point. I tell you, if you do this, you will have this. Slows down the aging process. I'm sure all the wives would like love to have this. Aging process. You want to stay young. You want to live longer. Get involved in this. Yes. Now you might be wondering whether this is true or false. I want to show you with evidence. With evidence. All right. Here you are. If you get into this website... If you get into this website, you will see what I just spoke. Now, I know you must be trying to copy paste this and all this. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I want to make your life easier. So what did I do? I took this part and I thought I should show you. Here you are. It makes your life easier. It says, in one study, having sex at least once a week was associated with having longer telomeres. That is, the protective cap on DNA that determines a cell's life span. Longer telomeres are associated with slower cellular aging and a higher life expectancy. Can God be better than this? Can he be better than this? He has given you everything. Everything. Think about it. I want you to think about it. Okay. 
let's see this this beautiful thing which i just described what is the story today conjugal act of today right let's see what has happened to this love making intercourse conjugal act what has happened to it today it has become a very selfish act only one party only one party is enjoying this yes or no i don't know if your wife is seated next to you turn your head and ask ask if she says no you are lucky if she says selfish act yes trouble trouble time to change time to think time to think all right see the next one duty duty sometimes our wives they think it's my duty to do for my husband duty you think god created this beautiful thing to make it a duty oh no 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 it is for both parties look at this the third one dead act 15 years into marriage 20 years into marriage 25 years into marriage you know 25 years into marriage i'm i'm not in front of you physically to ask when did you last engaged in this great intercourse are you scratching your head to find the last date has it gone dead has it gone dead no god didn't create this beautiful thing for it to die no no let's get into the next one next one say this money making business today a thriving business i think it is there in every country yes because this is one of the great desires of a man so you know the evil one evil one comes very nicely and chooses to use that to make money so you without knowing falls into that money making business today so when you do all those things god's intended purpose is not this no you are not putting a smile on god's face i'm telling you instead i can only show you this face yeah i can only show you this face this is what has happened to this in in lot of marriages yes i the selfish act a duty thing or a dead act or money making thing none of those things are pleasing to our god the creator who gave this thing yes Let's see the next one. Sin and conjugal act. Sin and conjugal act. Let's spend a little bit of time on these couple of slides because I want you to see this thing. Look at this. Now before I say about this matter and spirit, I want to tell you something like this. You know, in this world there's something called natural law. I'll quickly tell you what this natural law is. so that you would understand this slide better quickly i will tell let's say you take a you take a rose bud you take a ro- rose bud now let's say this rose bud is in your village in your village if you shift this rose bud with the pot from your village to 10 villages away from you do you think this will open up or it will stay as a bud it will just open up 
even if let's say that the owner of this bud is a super rich person and he gives this rose plant with the bud you know this little flower bud to a poor person and just because this rose bud changed hands do you think this rose bud will remain as a bud or will it open up it will open up so it's immaterial who the owner is the color of your skin whether you are rich or poor no what religion you are in it does not matter this is the natural law right okay so uh, the same thing applies to this with this natural law in this planet every human being has matter and spirit we are all we all have flesh and bones what we can see and there is something called spirit which we cannot see all of us whatever religion it is as long as we are human beings we have this okay now it's clear so all of us we have this now let's get into the slide i keep that love part of it a little bit like that now look at the next one non materialistic view what this says is this all of us now in in the context of conjugal act in the context of conjugal act we all of us you and your spouse i and my wife both of us we are made with matter and spirit matter and spirit this is what the natural law says natural law says okay so in that context when we get into the conjugal act we should be doing it based on love if i know if i know that god lives in my wife's body i will never be using her because this is god who is next to me i love my god so in conjugal act it happens under this that is if i believe this person has god inside her yeah i will not use her now i am using this little gadget this little gadget to put these slides up and down and if i want to sort of you know show something i press this yeah i do this so this i use this is a matter a matter i use okay come to the next one here it says matter only matter only what did i say this is only matter and i use this matter now on bed on bed if i don't believe that my spouse has spirit inside him inside her it turns out to become matter only so at that point at that point in conjugal act this turns to become lust basically i am using her because of the lust that i have the lust that i have and that is what we call the materialistic view the materialistic view now you can ask you know this this love and lust love and lust separates from a very thin line when your husband comes to the bed to have an intercourse you can't see anything written here on your husband's forehead to say now i am coming out of love to engage in intercourse yes neither it is written here no i'm coming with lust now it's not written here you have to find it out 
all the wives who are watching this program. What do you think? The last occasion that your husband came to have, you know, an intercourse with you, was he coming out of love or was he coming out of lust? Lust. Yeah, it's, it's a big struggle. I'll tell you. Yes, the human heart, the human heart is a battlefield between these two on bed. It's a battlefield. Yes. We should have the power of love crushing, crushing this lust, the pull of lust. This is very important. God is watching. God is watching when you are on bed to see whether you are treating your spouse as a person who has matter and spirit or are you treating this person as an object, as a matter? This, unfortunately, is a sin. It's a sin. You can ask from your wife when she's good, you know, peaceful time, both sipping coffee, ask from her, honey, do you like me using you or do you like me loving you? Ask. She will give you a good answer. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, let's get into the next one. Sin, my goodness me, look at this. It's a heavy thing that he is lifting. Sin. Sin and conjugal lack. Continues. I know what to do. I know what to do, you know. We have sometimes, I need to tell you this, you know, I had a, you know, a, a client who came and told me, this husband was telling me that his wife used to tell him, it seems, I know what to do. And she didn't stop there. Yes, she has been telling, I will teach him a good lesson. I will teach him a good lesson. Today, today, this conjugal act, this conjugal act has fallen to this level. This level. This wife was telling, basically, it's like she uses conjugal act either, either to give as a reward for his good behavior, for his good works, as a reward, or it is withheld as a punishment. I will teach him a lesson. He will never have my body. Yes. Never have. If you are a wife watching this program, ask from yourself, have I ever inside me, in my heart, the days that I was angry with my husband, did I ever think like this? If so, tonight I have given you a sin to confess next time when you go for confession. Sin. Yes. All right. So now I know husbands must be doing like this to their wives. Yes, possible. All right, I've seen this thing in churches. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. I'm coming back to the Bible quotation. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. A beautiful quotation. This is exclusively for husbands. Let's see. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus tells in no uncertain terms. No uncertain terms. If you look, look at a woman lustfully. Now the wives were thinking, oh, Roshan, you know, you said one sin for me, you know, to go for confession next time. 
Hmm, now you know she's doing like this to the husband, yeah? Yeah, there you are. Yes. Husbands needs to tap at their hearts and ask, have I been looking at other people like this? <sighs> you need to ask. Since. Since. And this is, of course, a big sin, I would say. Nowadays, Corona time, lockdown, no, cannot go out, cannot see anything. So here you are. I'm not sure whether this is only for husbands, because the statistics are telling the wives who are watching this is also going Yes. So, these are all, you know, some list of sins against this. There are many more. But I decided with my time management, I, I thought I should tell you this. But I'm not going to come out of this slide without telling you this. Look at this. Luke chapter 22, verse 51. Beautiful. It says, no more of this. It says, no more of this. Jesus is telling, no more of this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been on any of these plus any other sin against this, please, Jesus has these words for you in Luke chapter 22, verse 51. No more of this. No more of this. All right, let's get into the next one. Challenges in conjugal act. Challenges in conjugal act. I have a chart to show you. This is a beautiful chart. We're going to spend about five, six minutes in this chart. I want you to have a look. Where it is. Here you are. So the Y axis here is about intercourse, sexual intercourse, the conjugal act. And the x-axis is time. And this blue color graph shows you, you as a husband, when you are engaged in lovemaking, what happens? So here you have the arousal stage. Here you have the plateau stage. The arousal stage, a short plateau stage. So when you get yourself engaged in lovemaking, in conjugal act, in action, that is the period that you are engaged in. And then you hit the climax, then down, 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 all over. Now, I am going to superimpose on this chart the beloved wives chart also. Here you are. And this pink one is showing there her arousal period, you know, that much. And she has relatively, compared to her husband, she has a longer plateau. And then she gets into the climax, not one, but could have even two. And then she comes back to the resolution stage. Now, the point that I want to show you is this. This is what is happening normally. This is how God has created most of us. For the male person, for the husband, to have it earlier than the wife. That's how it is. Don't ask from me why, but that's how it is. We must ask from the creator, God, why did you create like this? And he has some words for you, I'm sure. Okay? That's how this whole thing is created. So... When you do this, when you do this, what do you think happens to this wife? You have reached the point of climax and she's still in this plateau stage. Once you hit this, you ejaculate and the next thing what happens is that your penis becomes soft and it drops down. 
he cannot maintain that until this stage until this stage so this is a big challenge the challenge is for this if you want to or the ideal thing is both of them should have at the same time either this must come here or this must come here or they both must come halfway through but both should have this this is what it should be ideally but that's not the way god has created or most of us so in actual fact what happens practically what happens this husband starts off with the wife love making reaches the plateau stage comes to this climax done done ejaculated din 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 then what happens but the bed sheet comes on top of him turns to the other side yes so this poor wife is thinking oh gone gone so she starts thinking yesterday also same thing day before also the same thing today guaranteed the same thing tomorrow will also be the same thing so what do you think this this wife is thinking obviously she must be thinking this is my duty i as a wife must show my duty this is a big challenge this is not only a big challenge but i must tell you it becomes this person starts thinking very very selfishly okay just a moment okay very selfishly give me one moment right here you are isn't this selfishness isn't this selfishness because because he is not thinking he is not thinking he is not thinking about her he's not thinking about her he only thinks about himself this is a big challenge that we have right okay in fact i don't want to leave this slide without a bible quotation god has something to tell each one of us in all these things in matthew chapter 20 verse 28 matthew chapter 20 verse 28 it says like this to be served not to be served but to serve what is happening here the blue peak he is looking to get served by the wife he is not serving he is not serving god has a message in this slide for all of us on bed during love making are you serving the other person or are you getting onto the bed to get served you need to ask this question yes it's a challenge all right let's get into the next one challenges in conjugal act look at this picture there is a huge weight and here we have this person pushing this thing on a steep surface like that a steep surface like that take a look at it steep surface like that so i'll tell you something common sense tell me this this man will start pushing this up the more he goes up tired he becomes yeah tired he becomes keep that in mind what i told you just now all right first thing psychological barriers look at this psychological barriers what are the psychological barriers that we have during conjugal act i'll tell you the first thing is this 
initiator, let's say the husband in this case, the husband is feeling shy to ask, shy to ask from the wife, shall we? Psychologically, he feels a little ah uh, like that. He will talk everything else about the telephone bill, about the electricity bill, about the water bill, about the rent, everything he will ask. But on bed, the one who said, I love you until I die, he's scared to ask. He's scared to ask. Psychological barrier. Second one. Second one, fear of getting rejected, fear of getting rejected. Especially this is big time. When you are about 20 years in married life, 25 years in married life, 30 years in married life, by that time you could be 55, 60, 65. But I'll tell you, husbands, their testosterone levels are good. Good. They want this. But the wives, by that time, it fades away. We'll talk about it a little later. It fades away. So, since the wife does not have this urge, the desire, what happens is the husband is scared to ask because when the moment he asks from her, if she says, what nonsense? We have grown up children. Yeah. These are the answers that you hear. So that's a fear. Third one, fear of getting ridiculed. This is another one that I've heard. Another one that I've heard. Because as husbands grow in age, what happens is that the ability the ability to have an erect penis little by little falls down, falls down. So instead of wife accepting it and having a compromise and understanding and talking about it, what sometimes what she does is that she asks, oh, big man, you are like a Montessori child on bed. Yes. I've heard it. Yes. Never. So he is scared. Scared. Look at the last one. Age-related issues. Menopause. That's another one. Wives hit this. System stops. And then she thinks that's all over. No, it is not over. It is not over. Maybe your childbearing abilities could be over, but not conjugal act. Not conjugal act. Right? So husbands end up with this. Yes. As an age-related thing, they end up in this erectile dysfunction. Or you want to call impotence, if you like, with an inverted commas, it's this. These are the challenges. We'll look at these things a little later. Now, we discussed all the challenges. We discussed the sins. We discussed the sins. As good as God shows you the challenges... The word of God always comes with solutions. Solutions. If I don't show you the solutions, if I don't tell you the solutions, and we stop this program here, I know you will ooh me. Yes, I know. I'm going to give you the solutions. The first solution that I'm proposing, more often than not, with lots of people is the last solution. But with me, it is the first solution. What is the solution? Is this. John chapter 16 verse 24. Jesus has words like this for you tonight. 
until now you have not asked for anything in my name ask and you will receive so that your happiness may be complete jesus didn't add this word here except for sexual happiness ask for all the other things no 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 he's got all his wires beautifully connected right he said so that your happiness may be complete ask so if you are a husband if you are a wife with any one of those challenges plus any other things on bed that you are experiencing i suggest tonight is a good night to start yes it's a good night to start kneel in front of god do you know why god gave you knees is to kneel down do you know why god gave hands it is to raise them up towards the heavens and a beautiful voice why did he give is to ask ask he's waiting until you ask to give it to you yes he wants to see you smiling he wants to see you smiling you have with your wife maybe another 15 years 20 years 25 years with your husband another 30 years that's it and god is telling time is running out ask so don't wait don't wait ask ask from tonight that is the solution that i propose the very first one all right let's get into the other solutions right now this is a beautiful one from selfishness to unselfishness from selfishness to unselfishness i go back to my chart if i don't do this justice for you i won't be able to sleep peacefully i'm telling you yes so i'm going to tell you this secret you remember this you remember this slide yeah in this slide let me see whether this is working all right you see this slide here i told you if it ends up like this it's all selfishness you know something god is teaching all the husbands a beautiful lesson on bed how to become unselfish leave alone your selfishness how to become unselfish i know all you husbands could be working your sweating out to earn money and to provide everything for your wife and to your family family you are a man of giving thank you good good but on bed are you a man who is giving this letting your beloved wife taste this are you nobody knows except for you and your beloved wife tonight i am going to tell you how you can take this here so that you and your beloved wife both will taste this and you are going to put a smile on god's face some could be hitting this no what no doubt some could be hitting this but some may not it is for them these words are all right okay so my attempt is to get you into this into this oops from here to here right this is what i am trying to do this is what i'm trying to do this plateau is going to be down longer than what it was before so that you would be able to reach here i'm going to give you one two three techniques will be good right especially if you are a young couple most of the 
elderly couples or the matured couples know this trick. But I want to tell you, tonight in this program, first thing, you might know, you might know, all these big, let's say, a good athlete, a good athlete, it's not always that they practice, practice, practice. Or it's not always that they eat good food. No, apart from that, they have someone called a mentor. So what they do is, they, these mentors, will prepare their heads, prepare their heads for them to win. To win. Yes. Cricketers go through this. Athletes go through this. All these, especially these people who are in sports, they have mentors. Similarly, if you as a husband start playing this game on your head tonight, from today, I am going to delay this thing. You start thinking. You remember what Jesus said? Jesus told the centurion who came to him saying that my servant is sick at home. If you tell from here, if you give your word, he will get healed. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, what you believe will happen. So start believing from your head. I will get this delayed. Maybe the first day you might get it delayed by 20 seconds. You keep believing, 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 believing. You can get little by little, little by little, little by little late. At least a centurion found it. Yes, his faith. So in prayer, my first answer, remember 1624? With that, you start believing in this. You can get start getting this a little longer. Number one. Number two, number two, usually the wives arousal, look at this, from this graph you can see it. Wives arousal is taking longer as compared to a husband. Within seconds, husband reaches this level. Look at this, that much of time. But the wives to reach this level takes that longer, that longer that long. So what you do is, during this plateau time, during this plateau time, while you are in lovemaking, when you know that you are going to reach, hit this somewhere here, you pull your penis out. You pull it out. Now, just because you pull it out, she is not going to fall like this, boom. No, it doesn't happen. Because as good as the arousal is slow, the resolution also here is slow. It's slow. And then what you do is, you give a good, good, keep your fingers like this and press it hard. Like that few seconds and then you start again so instead of the ejaculation happening here it it happens somewhere here it happens somewhere here so you do this thing once twice over the days weeks if not for months you get this thing down like that and you hit here. Now all the wives must be thinking, damn good for the husbands. They have a lot of things to do. Yeah? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it. Hold it. But this wife also must do something to get this towards this side. You cannot make noise. Hold it. You cannot make a noise with one hand. Do you hear anything? No. You need to have both, yeah? Both. That's where the noise is. So similarly, this wife has to do something to help this husband. 
I must teach you something tonight. Trick is like this. All right, before I tell you this, I want to tell you something, you know, some, you know, a little bit of a story so that it is easier for you to understand. I'm sure there could be some musicians who are watching this program. Okay. Let's say you are a guitarist. Let's say you are a guitarist. Now, before you play the guitar, what do you do? You tune it. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. You tune it. Then you play it later. Can I apply that theory here? Please permit me, allow me. What happens is this. So before you start here, you start tuning this person starting from somewhere here, not here. You start tuning up from here. So the arousal happens like this, da 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 da, and then it goes there. Yes. Now you might ask, Roshan, tuning the guitar. My wife is not a guitar. Yes, I know. I know. But she also has strings. Strings she has. I'll tell you where it is. You remember Song of Songs chapter 8, which I showed you? Remember? What did she say? I am a wall and my breasts are towers. She's hinting. She is hinting where my strings are. Where my strings are. If you think I have only one quotation, I will give you another one. That's homework. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. Look for it. You will find a beautiful one. Solomon, King Solomon is good in, in this. Yes, I like this man because 5,000 years ago, this man was the man who had the best wisdom. He will not teach rubbish. He taught his son and he wrote it in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 19. He said, the breast, the same thing. Look at it. You will find it's the breast. So, he said, this is the string, in other words, to tune up what we call today foreplay. So you do it somewhere here and you bring her, you arouse her from here and then she ends up like that. Yeah. So the man who is with lust is the person who jumps on his wife like a frog. The man who has lust is the man who jumps like a frog on his wife. But the man who has love and gets into conjugal land is the person who approaches very softly, like an experienced pianist. You know, you have a beautiful, expensive piano. The man who knows, who has practiced for years and years and years, he sits and he nicely starts. Dang, dang, da, dang, dang, dang. But the person who doesn't know, that piano will come. Don, 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 don. Ugly noise. Ugly noise. So be that experienced pianist from today. And then you will know how to hit here. I've given you some secrets in this. All right, we spent a little bit of time there. I have to really speed up now. Not only that, in fact, if you get into this website, you will find another answer. To retard your ejaculation, what it can do. Off the label medicine, something that they talk about it. Right? You can get into this. But I suggest before you do all these things, consult a doctor. That's the best thing. Right. Solutions. Second one, exercises. I'm going to speed up a little bit from now. Genesis chapter 3, verse 29. I'm always with Bible quotations because it's, it has got beauty, beauty, beauty. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. God says, by the sweat of your brow, you will 
eat your food. What is the food that we are talking here? Is the conjugal act. So if you want to eat that food, you need to sweat. How you sweat is by exercising. Yes. I saw in internet a beautiful t-shirt. On it, it was written, joggers do well. Joggers do it well. Now I know lots of husbands will start jogging from tomorrow. No, please. No, no, not so hurry, right? So, but we need to do this thing. This is important. Losing muscle tone. Look at this. Losing muscle tone forfeits vital energies and self-confidence. After you hit the age, maybe 50 or so, you will start, you will start losing muscle tone. So you need to exercise well physically. God has given this body. If we do not look after it, we are responsible. We have to answer our God. You cannot be like a potato couch. No, 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 no. Or couch potato, whatever you want to call it. No, it is not that. Right? You need to exercise. This is important. The last one, obesity, heavy smoking, heavy alcohol, all these things puts you down. A reason to stop this thing. A reason to stop this thing. You need to cut all these things down if you want to have conjugal act. It's very important. Right. Come to the next one. Solutions. Food supplements. Song of Songs. Against, again, chapter 2, verse 5. It tells a beautiful thing. Restore my strength. King Solomon is writing, restore my strength with raisins and refresh me with apples. I am weak from passion. You know what is passion? The passion that you have inside for conjugal act. King Solomon is writing, there are some things, raisin and apples, but more than raisin and apples, 5,000 years back. But now it's different. You, I will tell you something here. Vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, beta carotene. Now, before I tell you this, I need to tell you this. There's something called free radicals in our bodies. These free radicals, what they do is they are the culprits for diseases and dysfunctions. Dysfunctions. Free radicals. So, to attack those, what we need to have inside our bodies are, out of many things, one is antioxidants. Antioxidants. And these antioxidants come in various forms. Various forms. Apart from these, I will tell you best ones. Green vegetables. Green vegetables. Next one is whole meal food wholemeal grains, this stuff. Another one, important one, fresh fruits, three items. These things bring antioxidants, which will fight against the free radicals. That will support, that will support. If you start putting these supplements inside, of course, you must ask from a person who knows, maybe your family doctor or whatever, he would be able to tell you, but these things will support conjugal act. Especially after you hit 50, 55, 60, if you start, if you have started taking these things, it'll support you. The last one in this calcium rich food. Why calcium rich food is when you start growing in age, again, passing 50 years, you hit something called osteoporosis. But if you have been taking this stuff, uh, I mean, sufficiently, you will not hit that at that speed. Because as you grow old, it becomes a difficult task to get into the conjugal act. The postures change. Some postures are different, difficult. But if you've been into this, you will have a better chance. That's another solution. Okay, next one um, I want to tell you is the mindset. Now, your mindset could be like this at the moment. But if you are to turn it 
to this level like this, a few things. First thing is you need to let go anger and bitterness. If you've been shouting at your wife, firing her, maybe your, you as a wife yelling on your husband throughout the day, it is not going to be supportive to the act on bed. No, it's not going to support. So you need to let go of these things. Very important. You need to let go. Number two, let go of the fear of so many fears. I told you, rejection, ridiculing, stop those things. Do not use those words. They are not supportive for conjugal lack. In fact, they are very disruptive. So stop those. That's very important. Okay, next one. Let go unreasonable expectations. The way you were having an intercourse, the way you uh, did it 20 years ago, maybe when you got married 25 at the age of 25, at the age of 28, the way that you had things, you cannot have when you were 55. When you were 60 years old, you cannot have it. Drop down those expectations. Be realistic. Be realistic. That's important. Next one, mental pressure. It's not always Christmas, yeah? We have only one day in the year Christmas. We must understand that. So you don't have to have that undue pressure in your head. I must have this thing. Daily basis, I must have. She should be like this. He should be like this. No, no, no. No. As you grow in age, drop this pressure down. This is important. Important. Next one. This is something which I want you to think. This is for the future. If you love your children, don't ever do this thing. Don't ever, I tell you, do not sleep in two different beds. Husband is sleeping on one bed, the wife is sleeping on another bed. What does this say? This says no conjugal act. And when your children start seeing this thing, 18-year-old son, 20-year-old daughter, when they start seeing this thing, when they get married and when they have children, they do the same thing. Conjugal love, bam, full stop. No. You show me if you can in one place where Jesus has said, after you get married 10 years, stop everything. If you can show me, send it to me on text. I will, be, I will change everything. No. God never said that. Never said that. This is important. Show the best example. At least buy one bed where both of you can sleep. When children see you two sleeping together, the message is very clear for them. Message is very clear for them. I am a person who talks for pre k classes, couples who are getting ready to get married. You will be surprised for what they say about their mothers and fathers. Don't let this happen. Show the right example to your children. This is very important. All right. We end up, we get closer. The last slide, or one before this last slide. Robert Sternberg, Robert Sternberg's love triangle. This person is an expert. Expert. Just go and Google. Type this person's name. You will understand a whole heap of things. Basically, he is telling, if you want, if you want oxytocin and endorphins, you know what is endorphins now? You know what is ox oxytocin now? If you want this cocktail in your marriage, do something like this. Robert Steinberg brought this love triangle. I'm going to speed up and talk to you like this. Now, he says, in any marriage, basically, or any couple relationship, you should have intimacy, commitment, and passion. Commitment comes from head. Intimacy comes from the heart. And passion comes from your entire body specifically your reproductive organs, your sexual organs. It comes from this. And he said, if you want 
if you if you want your your consummate love your complete love you should have all these three things all these three things you cannot have only this two without this no there is no no love consummated no you do not have this is what more often than not happens when you are about 25 years into marriage 30 years into marriage you cannot even remember the last time that you had an intercourse with your wife or with your husband cannot remember now when that happens you are just like living like companions don't do that you remember what jesus said jesus said love your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul and with all your strength strength comes from the physical side of it and robert steinberg says the same mind heart and the body part of it he said the same thing which christ told many many years ago robert steinberg told some years back before i wind up i want to tell you this love has to be shown in action in action not only from your mind not only from your heart but from your body you need to show with action and showing that in action means you are in conjugal love if you are finding difficult to get into this i would rather suggest that you ask from the expert and the expert is there expert is there and here we come to the end of marital intimacy and conjugal act i would finish off with my last bible quotation to say it is finished and that is in john chapter 19 verse 30 if you want you can have a look at it john chapter 19 verse 30 it is finished tonight my program is also finished thank you thank you roshan thank you for that wonderful session and presentation uh, i think we are also running short of time but i will just take uh, one or two questions uh, coming from the participants there is one question which i like to put to you uh, the question is about living together how does living together impact sin and the conjugal act living together um, whether it's a sin or not and conjugal act put it this way what god said was what god said was the very first blessing that god did was in genesis chapter 1 he said he blessed adam and eve and said go and reproduce he blessed and said blessed means marriage it is only in marriage that you can have conjugal act when you are living together what is missing is the vow is the vow you don't want to give the vow in living together you don't want to give that vow to your spouse i will never leave you you are not giving that you are not giving that so i'll tell you if you get into the google and start looking for uh, statistics you will find there are a lot of people who are living together lot of people living together left their spouses because they want to have that little freedom in their pocket i am not committed in this that's what it says when you are living together you don't want to give that commitment it is not right god never permitted that and that's why in catholic church we have this all right that's a short answer i hope you got that little answer to your head okay uh, manon if you have any other questions yes yes 
uh, I think that's that's it. I think we are running short of time, but thank you very much. And on behalf of the Family Apostolate Committee of St. John del Bastoni Church, Palavatta, headed by our parish priest, Reverend Dr. Anthony Fernando Pulle, we thank you, Roshan, for those wonderful insights. Thank you very much. And also we thank all the participants who joined today on this beautiful topic of marital intimacy and uh, conjugal love. Of course, the webinar would not have been possible if not for the technical and studio arrangement team. Uh, I would like to thank Errol Johnson, Dr. Nilal Ratnayaka, Niranjan Fernando, Swendrini Fernando, Sudarshini Pereira, and Tushara Ratnayaka for all the support and the work that they did. So before we wind off, uh, please be on the lookout for next month. We are having a talk show on child abuse and domestic violence. So be on the lookout for the flyers. And I'll hand over to Roshan uh, to conclude the webinar with a small prayer. Thank you very much. God bless you and good night. Over to you, Roshan. All right. Thank you, Manu. Uh, we will wind up with a prayer. Um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time that you gave all of us tonight. Oh God, we want to ask pardon from you. We want to say sorry to you for all those sinful things that we have committed against you under this topic. We've come to realize so many shortcomings of ours this evening. We want to say sorry for all that. We ask from you, O oh God, grant, grant us grace to live our married lives with our spouses the way you want us to be. O oh Lord, please, we ask from you to support each one of us, especially when we are facing challenges, when we are tempted to do wrong things, save us from the evil one so that we remain in your heart. Never let us depart from you on this topic. Oh Lord, once again, we thank you for giving us the spirit to attend to this program and making us learn things to enrich our marital intimacy and conjugal act. Mother Mary, all saints and all angels, we thank you for interceding for each one of us this evening. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much for all of you uh, joining with us, uh, especially for our team here. You might not know. They've been working tirelessly um, to make this program a reality, uh, especially to Father Anthony. Thanks a lot indeed for supporting us to do this program. And once again, we can do all these things and it becomes useless if you have not been there. You've been with us till this moment of time. Thanks a lot indeed. I wish you all the very best. Good night and God bless.